Hello friends, and welcome back to Let's Play Return to Krondor. We're standing here in front of the last cottage in the shop sector that we haven't investigated yet. Hopefully when we go inside we won't be attacked by, a, say, a drunk and a yeoman. Watch out! My apologies for the state of the house. My daughter's very ill and we've been doing all we can to make her better. I'm afraid the smithy's closed now, but if you'd leave your order with me, I'm sure I could get to it in a few days. We're not here about smithing. We're here to find out what has been plaguing this village. We were hoping to examine your daughter. Why? We believe foul magics to be at play. And I possess some healing arts that may be able to stay its power. I appreciate your concern, but we've already got a healer working on her. And if Father Roland can't save her, I don't know what you can do. At least you could let us try. Well, forgive me, but I don't know any of you. For all I know, the witch has sent you to win past Father Roland's prayers and harm her. If you are who you say you are, get Father Roland or the mayor to vouch for you. Then I'll let you see her. But not a moment before. Understand? So Merrick refuses to let us help his daughter, Merrick's wife, is guarding her. Pretty barren house. All I've got to say about that is, we're not here about smithing. So I need either Father Roland's permission or the mayor's permission in order to help Merrick's daughter. So let's go to the pulpit and see if we can't talk to Father Roland. Praise God. He's holding a sermon. Again do I say that if we wait much longer, we will be swept away by a tide of evil. And where, must I ask, is the justice in this? I will tell you where justice lies. It lies in the strength of our arms, the purity of our souls, and the burning that will rid the world of the witch's evil. Today's sermon is entitled, How the Burning of the Witch Will Purify Our Souls. It's part of a series by Father Roland on the burning of the witch. Popular subject. Hey, get out of my way. Welcome, travelers. I'm Father Roland. What brings you to our fine village? We're just passing through and hoping to find some information on the area. Unfortunately, my friend, you've come at a hard time. An evil witch plagues this land, poisoning our livestock and killing our townsfolk. We could use the help of good souls such as yourself to put an end to this menace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what about Merrick's daughter? Can we talk to you about that? What proof do you have that these misfortunes are a witch's doing? For that, you would have to talk to the people she has affected. Farmer Alton, for example, whose cows she cursed, or Goodman Remy, whose son she killed. Often the foolish blame simple misfortune on innocent women. Make no mistake, young woman, there is evil in this witch. The gods themselves have shown it to me. Have they now? It seems as young if... Young woman, I appreciate the passion of your responses, but your arguments speak of a darkness in your own heart. I would ask you to tend to the matters of your own soul before concerning yourself with the sins of others. As for us, the witch at Widow's Point is evil. And good must be ever vigilant against her advances. Now if that is all... This is not going so well. All he wants to talk about is the witch. What do you know about the woodcutter's shack? I was one of the first to comfort Malcolm and Nathan when they returned from that fateful trip. And I saw, oh yes, I saw, the horrors of the witch's magic twisted the skies above the shack, turning day into night. Well do I believe that her demons slaughtered those men, turning them into undead fiends. What about the creatures that wander this town at night? Some would say that the witch has sent a plague of wolves that walk as men to haunt our land. I would say she has summoned darkness incarnate. Spirits so foul they drain the life from good people as you and I. Either way, the blame for their manifestation lies on her doorstep. 
May Almighty Song watch your steps. That didn't go so well. I would say she has summoned darkness incarnate. Let's talk to the mayor and see if we can get permission from him to help Merrick's daughter. Hopefully he doesn't babble on about the witch. He doesn't do that, though. Oh, and look at this. We can actually buy some mail here. I was beginning to think this place didn't sell anything. Mail for myself and my companions, good sir. Certainly. Solon, that's you know, rude. It's wonderful to have some patrons again to love him the place up. Solon is so rude. And so is this mayor guy. He just changes the camera and breaks off our conversation. Perhaps you could help us in seeing the blacksmith's daughter. The priest and myself are versed in healing and may be able to help her. There is nothing that would please me more than to see his little girl well again. But uh, Merrick, her father, is rightfully afraid of strangers. Uh, perhaps if you could help us with the beasts that are plaguing us, I could help you with a more clear conscience. Thank you for your help. We'll try to return before nightfall. See that you do, or I don't dare open the doors after dark. So rude, Solon. But the mayor's pretty rude too. He refuses to allow us to help Merrick's daughter until after we have sort of solved all of his problems. He just assumes we can do this, and he assumes that our intentions cannot be proven to be good until after we have done this. So this is one of those puzzles. How do you get rid of the, the vampires, the creatures? No one's called them vampires, actually. Well, they come out of the graveyard at night. But if we fight the vampires at night, we cannot destroy them. They turn into vampire dust and they somehow get back here and that doesn't really hurt them, it just sort of sets them back. And we cannot open the tomb in the daytime. This is an odd tomb for such a small village. It was here long before the village. These carvings are ancient. So the thing is, we've got to get the tomb open in the daytime so that we can fight the vampires and have them destroyed by the daylight. And the way to do that is with a nightstone. Here we go. He shall protect us. The darkness is upon us now. But the stone feels empty, used up. We can only hope that it means a quick end to this darkness. I wonder if that's something Solon says every sunset. Ye shall protect us. The darkness is upon us. <laughs> All right. So let's go kill those vampires. Here they are. We've got all the all of our friends. We've got servant woman. Poor girl. Oh, come on. No, well, won't show me, poor girl. Let's start with some fire oil. One, two, three, four, five. And the gentleman is apparently immune to several things. You can't hurt him with fire oil. I don't know why. Ow. Poor girl, why don't you go for a flight? How about near the pulpit? I'm gonna have James focus on this guy. Because he is just a real pain, I've gotta say. Fire oil, one, two, five. It's not gonna hurt the gentleman, but... We'll get everyone else off of our backs. And I don't know what I can do with it. I don't know, I'll just give James Demon Blade, I guess, because I can't seem to hurt the... I've tried this battle before, and I can't seem to hurt this guy with, with magic. Come on. Time to die. And it seems to me the more 
Wow. <laughs> James. See, watch this. Jashara shouldn't fail to do a contest of wills. She can't do it. Kandara could certainly handle a mind blade, but it doesn't even hurt him. So, this task falls to Solon. If he can hit. Come on, Solon, stop wasting my time. Let's put a sunray into this guy's face. Maybe that'll help. Oh, that does a lot of damage. Alright. Cast another sunray into his face. He doesn't like light. Should have realized that. He really doesn't like that hammer. But he likes... Oh, great. Look at this. Atrocious. Come on, cast sun rays! No! Don't you dare! Another sunray in his face. And another. Alright, cool. So that battle was worth 700 experience to those two... those two clowns that got knocked down by the vampires. And... We get 1,500 experience for just dealing with the vampires. And they're gone! How about that? You guys are terrible. And James has gained a lot of experience from that. So, there's vampire ashes. And rings. To assess. I think there's at least, at least one nice ring in there. Assess all of that. Ring of Prandur's Blessing. How do you like that? Mind Ring, Storm. My Pathway of the Mind. Hmm. Could always try it out. Switch the rings, thank you. I don't need a charmed ring, I don't need an ornate gold ring. Or this ring, or this thing, and I don't know what that one is, so I'm gonna have Chisara go all the trouble to assess it. Another charmed ring. And that's everything in here. James and Solon, I am very disappointed in you. Should have been able to handle those those vampires. What I don't understand is if the if the magical night ended, why didn't the doors close? I mean, the night falling seemed to be enough to get the doors open, so why didn't the doors close and seal them inside when when the daylight came back? I don't know. Probably never will know. All right, Mayor, I solved your problem. Your little problem, as the mockers say. It's all across town. You've destroyed them, haven't you? The creatures that plagued you will do so no more. If there's anything I can do for you, as Mayor or Innkeeper, you have but to ask. I've prepared a letter to Merrick, the blacksmith. Would you be so kind as to check on his daughter? The poor thing's so ill. We'd be happy to. Great. Let's have a look at this letter. This is not Betrayal at Antara, where you look at a letter and you get, an, you get a mouthful. Full. Where's the letter? There it is. You get a mouthful for opening a seal or something like that. There it is. Solve all their problems, finally get to actually lend a hand. 
Thanks a lot, townsman. Next time on Let's Play Return to Grondor, we investigate the plague upon Merrick's daughter. See you then.